Evening, I'm Cliff and this is me shed. Tonight I'm going to be doing a uh, crop I've got this crop coming. Um, the big problem with it, it's got a few problems but the main problem is on the strike side. It doesn't feel like the uh, spring has broken, it feels like it's come off at a click. But um, first thing to do with it is to get the hands off which isn't going to be too much of a problem because the hand collet and pins missing and get it out of the case. And here's a view of the back of the clock. I've taken the, the hands off. Um, it's got a very long gong rod in it, nice old label in the back. Uh, I'm going to have to take the gong rod out and that's secured by a nut underneath here. And then the movement's just held in with these screws. There's four of them, one there and basically one in each corner. Um, I'll get on with that and then we'll see what, what it's like when it's out of the case. All right, well I've got it out of the case. Um, there was a screw, one of the screws were missing out of the hold the movement in and while well, giving the clock case a shake this appeared in the bottom of the case I don't know if you can see that on the camera but it's definitely a tooth out of one of the wheels so there's more to this than just the bro, just the click you can see the, the, the main problem with this, why, why this uh, strike wouldn't wind up, is this click spring. This click should be behind this spring and somehow it's become dislodged from there. Um, I wouldn't say this is a particularly old thing, this clock, but I have had it before. I don't know whether you'll be able to make this out on on there but uh, I last repaired this in 1985 uh, 32 years ago that didn't do bad I've got to inspect it now and see where that tooth's come from I suspect it's somewhere on the Strike. It looks like a tooth, a barrel tooth to me. But um, when this has somehow flicked out of the way and this has let go with the power, it's knocked the tooth out. <coughs> it's um, quite dirty. There's a couple of punch marks on the movement which probably means it's going to want pivoting and bushing certainly there. I'll strip the clock down and get it in bits and then turn the camera back on. The uh, first thing to do before you're going to strip the clock down <coughs> obviously all the power's off of this spring you need to get the power off before you start undoing any nuts or bolts so on the going train it's just a case of getting the let down tool on there lifting the click out of the way and letting all the power off and just to be doubly safe if you're not that familiar with it because there's an awful lot of power stored in the springs in the clock. If you do try and take it to bits, without removing the power, <coughs> you're in for some pain and suffering. And it will probably do the clock a lot more damage as well. Uh, 
I shall remove the suspension and the pallets. And now there's definitely no power on, on the clock anywhere. Everything's spinning freely, there's no power left on there. So I'm just going to undo these four, take, take them off, remove these four nuts and get the clock to bits. Alright, so I've got them all to bits. <clears throat> got the plates apart and got all the gubbins out. This is the going train over here. Um, I've had a quick look at that, there's no big issues with that. But the striking train does have some issues. Um, the most notable, there you can see it. There's a tooth out, which is the one I found in the in the clock case out there. And this one next to it is quite badly bent over. If I try to straighten that, I know it will snap. So it's gonna. It would even need a new barrel making. Um, the cost of that is not. It's going to be too much for this this clock. So I'll just take two or three of these teeth right out, let a bit of brass in there and just form some new teeth on that one. The, like I say, this was an old repair but it looks like it was soft soldered in. And <coughs> where I pointed out <coughs> on the front plate, these punch marks when it focuses and you can see these punch marks here and one down here um, they're going to need rebushing and this this one the actual pivot is very very pointed shaped down at the bottom here it's very thin down at the bottom and it's actually got a ridge Basically it's scored to the point where it could probably snap at any time so that will need re-pivoting as well. Now I know that because I've got my mark on it that I cleaned uh, or I had this clock in 1985 and in 1985 I was actually at the uh, Brixton College so I'm suspecting this came into the college for cleaning and servicing and has somehow found its way back to me 32 years later and I'm guessing that it's stopped or that tooth came out of the barrel sometime in the last 32 years and whoever repaired it possibly cleaned it but it doesn't look like it's probably been cleaned in 32 years but they just did a quick repair on it soft soldered the tooth into the barrel and punched up these to make it go again but this time it will get repaired properly so the first thing I'll probably do is re-pivot this um, so I'll go over to the lathe and show you how I'm going to do that Right, I mean there's a couple of things here, I'm just going to um, try and use my lens and show you the uh, damage on this pivot because I don't think you can see it from any sort of distance. So hopefully that made it a bit clearer. Um, if you've never really repaired a clock or don't think, but uh, if you've ever tried to straighten a pivot, if you've ever had a bent pivot, that's sort of like I've just bent that now. If you've ever had a pivot that's bent or something like that and you think I'll straighten that and that happens it can feel it can feel like a disaster, it can feel like the end of the world. But actually re-pivoting 
an arbor is not that difficult and I'll take this over to the lathe now set it up and we'll re-pivot it all right so look at the lathe there's a little tiny bit of the um, the old pivot still left on there sort of pivot in the shoulder I'm just gonna clean that off Just gonna emery that up flat. And I'm just gonna use the emery just to clean the shoulder up a little bit. There's a couple of reasons for that. That's enough. I'm gonna be using the uh, little drill guide to find the centre and just put a little pop mark in there ready for the drilling um, this is this is the little the little centering tool it's just a piece of brass that the drill goes through and in this end is a cone so that it's self centering it's quite hard to do this and see it on the on the uh, camera but you just put it on there it's self centering slide the drill in a little bit of finger pressure and it will put a mark dead in the centre ready for drilling to put a new pivot in there so I'll do this best I can um, if you want to know how to make one of these I'll do a separate video on making a centre finder so you just put that into the cone on the cone end onto there spin the drill, you can feel, feel when it's in the right position and then that should let's put a little divot in there so that you can see I'm not I'm not really holding this very tightly. We will find that pop mark ready for the drilling. I'm just going to make sure I've got the right size drill and drill the arbor out to put a pivot in. Okay, I'm going to just drill a little hole down the centre. As far as depth goes, this is a 1.1 mil bit I've got here. Um, I would normally go two to three times the depth of the the bit. So I want to do this about three mil deep. And that should be plenty. idea of the depth yeah so um, when my thumbnail is when my thumbnail is is the depth of it so it's plenty I've just got to cut a bit of pinion wire and tap it in there so I've cut off a little bit of pinion wire you can't see it but um, I've just squared the end off and just filed a very small chamfer on it just to help it go in so 
And I know people who say you shouldn't do this in the lathe because you damage your bearings. But I just did it. And basically that's it. Your new, your new pinion is in there. Um, it's it's going to have to be a radius put on the end and polished. Um, I won't be fitting it to the pivot hole in the clock because I'm going to rebush it. So I'll, I'll do the fitting when I'm doing the bushing. Um, I'll go ahead and polish and finish that off. You, could, you can, if you want, put a bit of super glue or a bit of Loctite in here to hold him. But if you, if you get the drill bit the size right, they go in there fine. Um, and as long as that's showing up on the, the camera there, it's a perfectly centred little pivot. And what can seem like a disaster when you snap a pivot in a clock really isn't that much of a disaster. So I will go ahead and uh, clean that up and polish it. Um, I'll, if, if anyone wants to see that, I'll video it, but I'll put that in a separate video. And the next thing we'll do is rebush the two holes in the plate. <laughs> 